Hello, my name is Kevin and this is the Love Decanters channel. So today I'm going to talk about and show you uh, reproductions of Georgian and Regency decanters. Um, during the period sort of like 1900 to 1940, there was a real fad for, for uh, or fashion I would say, for having sort of like Georgian and Regency decanters. And um, yeah, manufacturers are there to help people out, of course. And um, so what they what they did was they were making effectively copies reproductions. They're not they weren't faking. I have one fake that I'm going to show you that is like this is a fake. It's trying to be, pretend to be something that it's not. Um, but the rest of them, they're copies. But and there's the good, the bad, and the ugly amongst those copies. So some of them. They're, they're so copies that 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 and um, how can I put this? Uh, there's so much of a they're just like a a cartoon of a copy almost, yeah. And um, others are, are faithful reproductions, and um, and now obviously we're talking the period 1900 to 1940, and they've got a bit of wear on them, so they're not 200 years old. They're only a hundred years old, so you can't always tell. And you, you're going out. And what I would tell people: if you're looking for your own Georgian or Regency decanter, I would say there's probably almost as many copies as there are the original ones out there. So you have to approach it from the point of view of when you're looking at them: is this a copy? What am I looking for to know that it's a copy? And the other thing to keep in mind is if you're buying it to use it, go with a copy because the stoppers fit better, you know, and all that kind of stuff. You know, if it if it's broken, yeah, you've not damaged something that's 200 years old. You've only damaged something that's 100 years old. So, um, but yeah, the, the 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 copies are generally much better quality. So you're buying something that's still good. Um, and especially if it's sort of like the uh, slightly earlier, the 1900 to, to 1930 kind of period, where they were still um, they weren't doing the acid polishing of them. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to show you some references as I go along. So I won't I won't uh, bore you out with a bunch of references right at the beginning. I will show you some decanters, um, and I will do some comparisons. So I've got a couple with me. I'm in the shed. I don't have all of my stuff here. But I think I've got enough to do a fairly lengthy video, and um, and I will show you, um, and I will put them alongside some of the real things so you can get that feel for what is the difference, and I will try and highlight some of the differences as we go along. So I hope you enjoy this. So, so these are the um, decanters I'm going to start with. So uh, the one on the left here is a real Georgian decanter, circa 1810 or something like that and um, maybe earlier and the one on the right right there you go um, is a, a claret jug or claret decanter um, that's made about 1900 uh, by Edinburgh and Leith in Scotland and um, yeah you can see immediately if you look at the base if you look at the base of that one compared to that one and this is actually on the slightly sunny aside it's actually cloudy but um, you can see it's darker so the actual color of the glass you can see the difference in the brightness uh, this one is so not super dark uh, generally but it is but when you put it against this one which is super clear bright glass uh, very crystalline you can see the difference and um, yeah I have other ones that are even darker than this and some that are real ones that are, are lighter but yeah, and then let me show you something on this one, if I can. Here we go. Look at, look at one, look at how bright and shiny it is. But then look at that stopper. Look at that. It's perfect. It's, there's hardly a mark on it. And it's a polished one as well. Um, yeah, polished, polished one didn't really come in until 1820s and 30s, which is about the time this was made. They they kind of like start off as being less common, but yeah, it's just so clean, so nice and clean. Um, the other thing about this one is, let me put it back so I can point this out to you. The handle 
has been applied, attached here and then dragged down and put to here. Okay, so this is the way it was done before 1870. So they have actually gone back to using the old way of applying handles, and even right down to this um this little thumb piece here that they've put on the top. That is very period. So this is actually a very good copy, apart from the fact that one, the cutting is absolutely perfect. If I if I was to turn this on my hand and like this, it's really smooth. The the prisms are all perfect. Um, yeah, if it usually uh, the 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 um, cutting here, this cutting is usually slightly wonky on um, on Georgian ones if you run your fingers around them. Um, so yeah, so this one is kind of like, it's a great uh, claret jug in super condition. The stopper fits fantastically, like a piece of engineering. Uh, but it, yeah, and it's too good, it's too good. The, the way this stopper, although, yeah, this is, this is not a very common way of making stoppers from the Georgian period, so yeah. And that's one of the things you see on, on a lot of copies. They have really super nice features that you don't see very often. Um, this one, if I show you this stopper, if you look at the, it's kind of like has an unfinished piece here. Um, it's unusual that actually it's got a ground, ground in fitting, but it's just like a little narrow band and actually on the decanter itself, if I can get it into picture, yeah, the actual bit where it's fitted there is very narrow as well. So yeah, that's that's uh, not normal. Normally it's longer, but go the stopper and the and the way the stopper and the peg are fitted together and it seems to work together. Um, it's the same width. So yeah, I'll, I'll feel and also it's. <laughs> It's not a fantastic fit, so so that fitting is not even that genius, really. Um, so so yeah, so that that's why you know. Although I I feel this is original, it's not a genius fit. It's not really even made to be a genius fit, um, and, and that's the kind of things that you see the differences between um, Georgian ones, the real ones that are. 200 plus years old and one that's just 100 years old just the technology leaps in them so this is the reference i'm going to show you in in relation to the edinburgh and leith um decanter I, sh I was just showing you it's called the decanter an illustrated history of glass from 1650 by the infamous andy mcconnell and yeah look at this he has in his book a whole section on reproductions and fakes um, and look at all this. Yeah, look at all this. All looking very kind of Georgian-y recency. And here, it, th which one? This one. Look at that tiny little picture. But if I get up close, really close. There you go. That is a decanter you were just looking at. So that's my Edinburgh and Leith one tells you it's Edinburgh Leith in here so yeah that's that one so these are earlier period decanters now um, so these are pre-1800 ones well the one on the right is but the one on the left here is actually a, a copy um, I believe it's White Friars from the um, 1930s or 20s maybe um, the one on the right is probably sort of like 1780 or so. And um, yeah, you can immediately see this one here, where the stopper comes in, is polished. And they weren't doing polished ones at that period. And you can see this one's got a rough fitting, which is what you'd expect. Um, some some decanters from this period might not be fitted at all, in which case it looks polished and until you actually jiggle the stopper and it's all loose and it's not really, it's not even fitted. But um, yeah, the, if I show you the stoppers close up, that, that will be a real shower. Let's see, can I get it into the camera? Where's the, 
There we go. Yeah, look at that. You, you immediately see the difference. Um, yeah, this is a very typical way of white fries making theirs with the split down the middle. If you look at the ones that I did for the Spanish cut decanters, this is almost like a straight out of the uh, off a Spanish cut one. But this is the, the type that they were making at that time um, in the late 1800s. But yeah, again, this one, it has a few. Oh, here we go. Can we get a focus on it? It has a few little knocks, can you see? Let me see if I can get the camera to focus on that. I'm not on the background. There we go. So you can see it's got a few little knocks because this is sort of like 90 to 100 years old. But it's, look how stunningly clean it is. This one, it has a few knocks at the top. It's got, if I can get it to focus. Yeah, you can see, look, there's, even though it's not focused, you can see there's a, uh, oh, come on, focus, you, you monkey. What's wrong with this thing? But you can see it's chipped all the way around. Maybe if I just took these away, because I do want this to work. Yeah, there you go. Now you can see... The, the edge on, on this one is chipped all the way around. Um, the stopper is chipped as well. And, and most people don't like ones that are this beat up. But look here, look, look at these scrapes around the edges and everything. This is, this is what it takes over 200 years to do. And you can see scratches in the middle of this. Um, so yeah, so this has been in the wars. Even if it wasn't chipped, you would expect to see a certain amount of this kind of wear on it. Whereas this one... Absolutely, you know, it's pristine. There's not a chip on it. Really nice and clean, very bright and shiny. So this is a copy. Yeah, and um, and when you see it, when you think, um, is this a copy? When you see, oh, it's a Georgian decanter from a distance. When you look at it close, you go, it's a copy. And and th this is how you can tell. I'm going to sh show you some that are probably not so good copies, but we'll get onto those. So, yeah, for this um, one we've got is the White Friars James Powell and Sons of London. It's the Wendy Evans Museum of London book um, for this decanter. And here it is here. The one in the illustration here has an engraved band. It says a little engraved hand is it written across the middle uh, the one i have doesn't have that but the rest of it is exactly the same as the one i have and if you go and look at my other video where i'm showing you spanish cut decanters so and in my hand so this is in the house now i don't have these in the in the shed but this stopper looks exactly like the one and this is I've just pulled this straight off a Spanish cut decanter. So it's just the same as this one here. So, yeah, it's, it kind of tells you that's the white fries. Okay. Yeah, while I was about it, I thought I'd better show you. Look, they've got others as well. Look at these. These are all Regency style. I don't know this one so much, but these three other ones are definitely sort of. And I think they're covered. Yeah, look, there's another one um, in the um, sort of Georgian Regency style as well. So, yeah, um, White Friars was churning them out. I think they did some with rings as well. So you can't, you can't trust any of those manufacturers there. So I'm going to bend the rules a bit here. Um, in this case, the really fancy one on the left is the is the um, the original um, decanter from 1820s 30s? The two on the right are copies, but they've got some things in them that are very obviously make them copies. So 
yeah, the one on the left, it's only looking bright. I, it, I think it is actually brighter glass, I'm not definite. Um, but this one is quite bright. Um, but let me show you some things on this close up. For starters, yep, you see that stopper like we saw before. Yep, big chunk out of the bottom. That's, and then if you look at the rim here, a lot of people would remove all this damage, but yeah, this has had a hard life. Um, and yeah, there's things about the, even the, the cutting here, if I was to run my finger around it, it's full of knocks and chips. And you kind of expect that if it was perfect, you know, in fact, actually there's a big chunk there. I didn't realize that, but yeah, um, I bought this one in Ireland. So it's a very nice one and it's got a matching stopper. Look at that. So yeah, this is a very cool decanter, even though it's a bit beat up. But let me show you these ones here. So this one has a very nice period looking stopper. But again, look at this polished, super polished. And, and the, but the shape of the stopper is very good, very original looking. But then it really lets itself down. The rings are normally done as a, like a sausage that's then a, applied to the neck. These are not done that way. These are faux rings, I call them. So they're, they're actually um, pressed out from the inside. If I run my finger down the inside of the thing, I can actually feel where the glass has been pressed out to create this ring. Um, so it, it kind of goes in and out on the inside to go in and out on the outside. Um, the cut cutting is like super precision. Look at that. And you're not really... I mean, yeah, some of them might be really damaged and used, but this one is not. Um, yeah, proportionally for the overall size of the decanter as well, this, this stopper peg looks tiny uh, and it does fit perfectly. Um, but yeah, so that's why that one is wrong. Give you this one. So this one is a bit more beat up. Um, you can see it has real rings that are properly applied, but this stopper is, and, and the stopper's beat up as well, but look at the side of the stopper. Hardly anywhere there. You'd expect it to be very greyed out. Um, and this, with this edge, it's really weird. That's not like a Georgian one. It, Georgian ones are more like this one here in the middle. Um, so it's just wrong in different ways. And proportionally, yeah, these the shapes, they're too, they're too tall. They're, they're just wrong shapes. Um, no, I'll just grab something else off the side here. Let, let me show you something else. Look at that shape. Yeah, or grab another one. You see what I mean? Too, they're too, they're too big and hefty. So they're get back without breaking anything um yeah they're not right and and the base on the one on the left is really thick as well um, back in those days glass was tacked by weight at the mouth of the furnace so yeah that would be excessive really excessive so um so yeah it's just wrong i don't know who made those ones either yeah, I'm coming at you with a really good copy now. Um, it's, I think this is um, Home Guard. I think it's Danish from it's pre-war. I will find a reference. I do have a book reference for this. And um, yeah, there's lots of things about this that are right, but then there are some that are wrong. And this is why I'm saying you've got to um, approach it from the point of view. Is this a copy? Whenever you're going to buy a Georgian decanter, first thing you go, is it a copy? Um, if you look at this stopper looks great look at this I'll bring it in look at that it's made the right way not quite finished it's got some wear in it to fit it in where you can see this is the original rough area and then it's got this where it's worn down to fit in um, but yeah, this is 
this gilding is too crisp, too, too perfect. I think it's gilded the old way. So from that point of view, but it's not worn off. So by after 200 plus years, it should be mainly worn off, but it's not. And you can see it's, it's not even too clear. The glass is actually got a nice dark color to it. has lots of slightly bladed rings where the rings come to a bit of a point at the edge but the shape is a bit odd for a ship's decanter it's got a pot mark but look at the base look at there is if I, if I can find it look there's a little bit of scratching there yeah so it's got some age you can see a little bit of scratching but what you should see is a mass of gray a, a mass of I'll, I'll show you and I'll grab another decanter in and show you how a base of a Georgian decanter should look. I'll grab this one. No, nope, that's not so good because it's got a lot of cloudiness. I want one that's not so cloudy. There's that one. I want, I want one where it's really clear what I'm looking at. I'm sorry I'm messing this up. How's that look? Yeah, perfect. So so this is the one I showed you earlier. And can you see, uh, this is where the decanter hits the table. And it's just completely opaque ring running around the edge of the decanter. So that's what 200 years of wear looks like. Yeah. It's even got a fault here where where they've, they've tried to give it a polished pontal, but in actual fact, they've had to scoop a bit more out because of the broken pontals, um, probably deeper into the glass than they would have expected. So yeah, things like that, features like that, you look for on old decanters. So I'm showing you a couple more here. Um, the one on the right is the real one. I don't, I should have gone back into the house and got something else to match it a bit better. Um, the one on the left is the copy. Um, but the thing that I can point out immediately is, see that's got a rough fitting stopper, that's got a polished in stopper. So this type of stopper um, is called a lunar cut disc, um, is a 18th century one and then it shouldn't be polished. Yeah, straightforward. Um, there's things about this that make it a bit nice. The bladed rings is not common for that period, but yeah, they're very nicely. Everything on this is nicely done. Look at the cutting, it's really neat. But this is, this looks like, it's so precision. It is, So at this period, they would have been doing cutting on a foot treadle, and this is clearly machine cutting. It's so nice. Um, there's a bit of wear on the base. Um, but yeah, not 200, not, well, for this, it should be more like 240 years, but that's not 240. It should be just it's slightly, it's getting there, um, but it's not, it's just not enough. Um, yeah, it's just too nice. The cutting is too precise. The stopper's wrong. It's it's nicely done though. It's a nice. It's a very pretty decanter. Um, this one, yeah, this one's damaged actually. But uh, this is the one I wasn't going to show you the base of because it's all cloudy. Um, but yeah, you can see where it sits here. It's just too too rough. Um, and yeah, the stopper is that same unfinished style. It's a really good fit. So yeah, the stopper's probably worth more than the decanter now because of um, that big chip. I'll probably use this one. Because if, I, if I'm gonna use a uh, Georgia one, you might as well use one that's already on its way out. 
So, um, yeah, this is the only one that I'm going to show you, or that I have, that is an out and out fake. So, um, these are both supposedly cork um, Irish decanters. Um, I think the dates normally given for this is 1783 to 1800 for this type of decanter. They might. Um, this one on the left is the fake. This one is the real one. Um, I think I might have said earlier that some decanters, the stoppers are not fitted. So it looks like it's polished, but in actual fact, it's not fitted at all. It's not cut to fit, it just sits there like that. Yeah, and it's not very tight fitting because it's not cut at all. It just hangs in the top. It kind of gets a, because you can see it's wedge shape and it just hangs at the right spot. Um, yeah, so this is a, this is patterns called Vesica and Diamond, which is very common. Every, everybody attributes it to Cork Glasgow. If I look in the base very carefully, I think on this one, I've got another one. Uh, it's the other one. Um, yeah, on one of mine, um, you can see where it says uh, a couple of the letters of the name. So not this one, I brought the wrong one. Um, but yeah, there's, it's, a, it's a really nice. And this is one that's in all the reference books. Um, the other thing that all the reference books has is because some of them, they have the name pressed in the base. So this one actually says, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, Cork Glass Co., which is the classic, um, you know, there's no other mark on there to say that it's not Cork Glass Co. Um, there is a bit of wear on it. Um, There's a bit of wear on the body, but not anything excessive. Um, but the stopper is fitted, and it's fitted uh, like like a piece of engineering. So it is rough fit, but yeah, it's so so well done uh, for that period. Um, and it's way too bright. There's not enough. There is a minor amount of surface wear, but just just there isn't enough um when it's sitting back here next to the door let me pull them forward a little bit maybe they won't fit in the picture so well but look how shiny the one on the right on the left is if i switch them around it's still shinier yeah you can see that it's got a higher refractive index. Basically, it bends the lights more and it projects more light back at you. And um, so, yeah, it, the glass is too nice. Also, and it's very difficult to tell, even against white, and you might just be able to tell near the bottom, the, the one on the right has a slightly blue tint to it. The one on the left is just grey. So if you're looking here, here, you can see it's slightly bluish. Can you see that? And that is actually there. It's not just a trick of the light. Whereas this one here, at the base, is just grey. So, I will tell you a story here. One of the early books on, on old glass made this emphatic statement that um, Irish glass had a blue tint. Okay, And everybody was looking for this blue tint. I've never seen any. Um, and it's and it was repeated a bit in other books. So once someone says it, um, yeah, other people copy it. Back in those days, the books weren't great. People would copy each other. You see things like, oh, it's a picture from Victoria and Albert, and then you see it repeated in every other book. So yeah, there's the books weren't as well researched and, and detailed as they are now. Um, and yeah. It, I I didn't pay a lot for the the, the fake one. I believe it's um, there was a lady faking them in the 1930s. I think it's one of those. Um, and you only fake where there's money. So 
the others are copies because there's no money. I mean, yeah, even at the peak when these things were a bit more expensive, they were worth, a, you know, £100 or so, £200. But one with the real, um, a real one with the cork glass coat that clear on it is worth, you know, several hundred pounds, maybe a thousand even. And if it had nice etchings as well, um, even more. So there was money to be made in making that copy. Um, so that's why it is a, it's a fake. It's, it's not, there's nothing about it apart from the fact that they've made a mistake where they fitted the stopper um, that tries to drag it away from not being a fake. Um, yeah. So that that's what a fake is, um, and usually when you something is trying to fake something, there must be value in it. So it has to be something that's good. Um, doing cut glass is hard because usually expensive cut glasses needs masses of skill to do. Whereas, yeah, you need to be a decent glass blower. But even then, if you look at look at how this base ring is kind of fat and podgy compared to uh, can I get it into the screen where is it there there we go compared to this one yeah you can see these are much more precisely made than these um fat podgy ones on here so and and generally the the Irish ones are kind of Square. These feathered feathered rings, they're called, are squarer than all of the ones I've got are all squarer than that fat podgy ring at the bottom of that one. So yeah, they're small mistakes, but the fact that one of the things that's most difficult to fake is the surface wear of the whole bottle. And if you were to look at very closely at the one on the left, you'll see a lot of marks and scratches on the surface because it's over two hundred years old. Whereas the one on the right, yeah, it's still not new just doesn't have the same level of wear. So, um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to conclude with that. I will also, you know, be showing you a reference for this as well. Back in the, um, the Decanter book by Andy McConnell. Yeah, so that cork fake, this, I think, is the most likely culprit. Um, a lady called Elizabeth Graydon Stannis, who, before the war, um, yes, she was kind of caught out. Well, she was selling fakes to somebody, to a guy who then tried to sell them and they were found out as fakes. And um, I think she later admitted after the war or sometime later anyway, that, yeah, she was making fakes. Um, so, yeah, this guy was um, really done over. And she was actually using... Um, the original moulds to blow the decanters in, into, which is why the the base of the decanter looks so realistic. So anyway, yeah, I think that's who may have made my Irish decanter that I have. So in conclusion, you're not going to see fakes very often. Um, what you're normally going to see is copies, and there's different levels of how good a copy they are or not. And as I said, as I said several times is you know if you're looking to buy a Georgian decanter the first thing you should be asking yourself is is it a copy is it a copy is there anything in this that makes it a copy because not all of the things that you're going to see um, are going to be the same because there are some newer ones that I've got that are quite beat up and you're just going yeah it's still a copy because it's there's other things about it that are not right so, yeah, you just have to take that approach to it. Is it a copy? Is there something that's too new about it? Is the glass too shiny? Is there not enough wear? Is there, you know, features on it that are just not original? Um, yeah, so, you know, but go out and buy them. And even the copies are, are still, quite often, they're still good value. Um, unless they're asking proper um, Georgian prices, you know, full retail Georgian prices, they're still good value. And you can use them and they look good on your table. Um, yeah, the fake, yeah, the, the thing about fakes is if you're going to spend a lot of money, <laughs> yeah, then that's when you need to be wary of fakes. And, and if you don't really don't know what you're doing, get someone to go with you, um, to have a proper look. Uh, and, and also 
if you get if you are looking to spend a lot of money and there's a chance to see something a, a real one that you know to be right of what it is that you're looking for go and see it first and then you can come at it with that view of this is what the right thing looks like so is this still right um so i think i'll i'll end there i hope you enjoyed this um i could have made it longer i have more glass back in the house but i'm in the shed and there's builders at the back of the house and yeah it's all a bit messy trying to bring things backwards and forwards so um it's just awkward um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, please like and subscribe. I will do be doing more videos. Thank you.